Well, hello, my friends. Welcome into another episode of the Subscription Web Design Podcast. In this one, I want to answer a question that we received in our YouTube comments, okay? This was a really great question about helping someone, his name was Amir, so thanks to Amir for this question, actually come up with competitive pricing in his niche, okay? And it's a it's an overall question that I think a lot of people have. How do I actually price my services? Um, you know, where, where do I look at for pricing inspiration and, you know, given my niche and, and all of that. So we're going to answer that question on this week's uh, episode, and I think it will help some of you. Um, inside of my course, which is now inside of my all-new subscription web design group coaching program, just go to subscriptionwebdesign.com. And you can check that out there. We have an entire module, an entire lesson on pricing and how to actually competitively price your services. And so if you're interested in going into an even deeper dive than what we're going to talk about on this episode, I would highly encourage you to go check that out. Okay. And again, subscriptionwebdesign.com. Go there, sign up today and become a member to get access to the coaching calls and um, the community and the course. And it's a, it's a great time over there and we're loving it. So join us now. Okay. So uh, the question, as Amir put it, is something like this. So how do I price my services in the sweet spot where you know I don't have a large enough team to serve bigger clients, but if I go too small with my clientele, they won't have a budget? Boy, that's a fantastic, fantastic question. Um, he mentions that... Um, his main selling point is like the personalization, right? Like, okay, like we're going to have a quick call or, you know, give me a quick text or whatever. You don't have to do formal emails and support tickets. And um, he's particularly concerned with working out like fair pricing so that he can take his share of the market, but then uh, not devalue the work of fellow web designers. And um, that's a very, very noble goal, I might add. So Amir is basically saying, how do I price my services, okay, um, in a way that isn't going to devalue the work that other web designers do, um, but, and I don't want to work with, budget, you know, clients that have no budget, uh, but at the same time, I don't have the resources to serve bigger fish clients, and so what do I do there? Um, how do I put myself into that sweet spot? So a couple things. One thing I want to point out is what we talked about last week about fulfillment partners, is a is a huge thing here. You can start serving bigger clients than you feel comfortable with when you work with a fulfillment partner, okay? And by the way, you don't have to start working with a fulfillment partner until you have a signed contract and money in hand from the people that you um, are working with, okay? From your client. So let's maybe an example of how to apply that thinking that we just learned in, that, um, in our previous episode to this. Well, a large enough team to serve bigger clients. I guess I would question what that means, okay? A large enough team to serve bigger clients. Does that mean you need help with the web design angle of it? Uh, do you need help with the website copywriting angle of it? Do you need, you know, what, which piece do you need help with? And this is something in general that I really advise uh, for people to do is if you're going to work with contractors or fulfillment partners or, or whoever, um, the path to a great business is to have a business where you do the thing that you're really good at and then you rely on your strengths with who's that can do other things, okay? So the question that entrepreneurs need to really ask is who, not how, okay? Who, not how. Let's say you really love designing websites. You love designing websites, but you don't love putting the website into a page builder or coding the web website from scratch or writing the copy or, or doing any of that stuff, okay? And all you want to do is work with your clients and do an initial design. You know, that's totally possible, okay? Totally possible, completely possible. And if you worked with a fulfillment partner who gave you a defined scope of what they were going to do. Now, my fulfillment partner that I work with, Pennington, I don't believe they actually build websites, but they will do copywriting, okay? So uh, one way to help uh, do that is to just figure out, again, what those defined prices would be. And you said, Amir, you know, that you don't have a team. Listen, I, I want to stress to you, that once you find out what something will cost you, all you have to do is make sure that the client is paying more than enough to make sure that you can pay your bills and then pay you as well, okay? So um, it's entirely possible to go to Upwork and, 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 and pay a defined amount of money for somebody to go in and actually take the design that you have created and translate it into a Divi website. It's one of the most common things that they do, okay? So let's say that you wanted to work with a fulfillment partner to do the website copywriting part of it. You wanted to design the, the layout of the site and then you wanted somebody else to 
put it on to Divi. So what would you do? Okay, You would go have a call with the fulfillment partner and you would figure out what their pricing is for website copywriting. You'd make a note of that number. Okay, you'd go to Upwork and you would put out a job request or you would look for somebody on there. I recommend working with people from the Philippines, by the way, because they're fantastic and they speak great English. And um, anyway, I recommend the Philippines. Okay, pricing is still very affordable. And uh, what you're going to do is you're going to go to somebody on Upwork and you're going to say, um, hey, I am going to have a design for you and I need to get that translated to Divi. What's your bid for that project? How much is that going to cost? Okay. And you're going to look at their testimonials and you're going to look at their portfolio of work and see if you're happy with uh, how those sites turned out. And if you are, you're going to accept that job or you're going to hire that person. And you're going to have a defined price. Now, if you're looking at working with long-term contractors, again, my typical recommendation is to work with, you know, to build a team. But if you don't want to build a team, okay, remember, you, you don't want to build a team. You just want to get a defined result for one outcome. You can do that. Okay, without building a team, and the work still ends up being great. So uh, again, Amir, I'm I'm making an assumption here, but let's just assume that you love the design piece of it, um, and you want to be able to scale your resources and your efforts. So what you would do is you go to a fulfillment partner and figure out what they're going to cost or charge for the copywriting of the website. Then maybe you go to Upwork, and you figure out um, somebody who can take the design and put it onto Divi, figure out what they're going to cost, and you get a defined uh, scope cost for that. And let's say that your costs to get all of that done are $700, okay? That's actually, might even be a high estimate. I'm serious. It's not that expensive to get a lot of this work done, okay? Um, Okay, and you don't even have to worry about the design turning out great or whatever because you're going to worry with that part, right? All you need is somebody who could take your design and put it on Divi and loads of people on there specialize in doing that and they do a fantastic job, okay? So here's what you're going to do, okay? You're going to get those numbers and you're going to say, okay, I need to make at least that much to break even Now, how much more do I want to charge for my service on top of that, okay? And then at the very least, I mean, bare minimum, you would double that number. So if if it's going to cost you $700 to get that piece of the website done, then um, you should at least double that, okay? So you're going to charge, you know you're going to charge at least $1,400, okay? Now, I happen to know because you told me that you're in, uh, I believe, in California. Uh, I can't remember how specific you were, if it was Southern California or where it was. I happen to know (laughs) that you can sell a website in Southern California or in California in general for a lot more than um, $1,400. Let me give you a pro tip here, okay? I'll give you a pro tip. If you had to hire you, to be the designer on the website, what would you charge? Okay? Now, don't think of yourself as the business owner. Okay? You, my friend, Amir, and all of you listening are actually, you have, you have multiple personalities in your business. And different people think of these in different ways. Um, I think Michael Gerber probably put it best in the sense that you've got owners, um, um, you've got, techni- excuse me, you've got um, entrepreneurs, you've got technicians, and you've got managers. Okay? Uh, maybe I should reverse the order, entrepreneurs um, slash owners, uh, managers, and then technicians, okay? Now, if you're a solopreneur, you are all three in your business. And more times than not, you're going to default to a technician mindset rather than an owner mindset, rather than the you know entrepreneur mindset, okay? And so a pro tip here would be to price, because if you had to replace you, you would have to pay a technician to do the work that you're going to do. So let's say it takes you 10 hours, to design a website, again, just the design, to create the design piece of the website takes you 10 hours, and a a competitive going rate for somebody to do the same work that you're having to do, again, you don't even have to think about yourself, get yourself, please, out of the pricing arrangement, get yourself out of the pricing arrangement, you can't think about price with yourself, imagine, in your local area, okay, now, you had to go out and actually hire somebody to do that design work, they might charge $100 an hour, it's going to take 10 hours, okay? So you have to think of a business as though you are not the business, okay? You're the owner of the business. So what you do is think about how much you're going to charge or how much you're going to pay inside of the business, the technician, to do that work. So your costs, okay, to design the website, to get the website translated to Divi, and to get the, the um, uh, website copy for the five-page website or whatever, done, your costs are $1,700, okay? $700 for the, for the person to put the website on Divi, or I keep saying Divi, but onto your page builder, you know, to get it onto the site, your costs are uh, 
and then to get the SEO, the the the, uh, the the copywriting done for the website. All of that together is seven hundred dollars. Then you're gonna pay a thousand dollars to the designer, which could be Bob down the road or you. You go pay a thousand dollars to the designer. That means it costs to you seventeen hundred dollars to build this website. Okay, if it costs you seventeen hundred, well, you can't charge your client two thousand, right? That doesn't make any sense. You would charge your client at least double that number. Okay, now I'm bad at math, so we're gonna pull out the calculator here, and we're gonna say seventeen hundred times two. Now that's thirty four hundred dollars. So you know. Now, with these objective costs to get things done, that you need to be at around $3,400. And anything that you charge above that, there's other numbers you could work in. For example, let's say you had a manager on payroll. You know, you'd need to charge them. You'd, if you want to work in profit and extra fee, like there's a lot that you can do with pricing, okay? But at the bare minimum, you should be making double what you're spending, okay? You should be making double what you're spending. That's honestly how you should be working this. So if it costs you $1,700 to get a website done, you should be charging $3,400 for it. Now, what's cool about this, again, because you're the solopreneur and you have charged for the design work what you would have to pay if a designer were to do it, but since you love the design, you're doing it, your costs are only $700. So that means you actually profited on this project $2,700. And watch this. All you did was the design work. As soon as you passed the baton to the next person to get the SEO done or to get, excuse me, the, the, the website copywriting done and then um, getting the website actually onto a page on the internet, okay? You pass the baton there. You don't have to spend the time to do that work. So what are you going to do? You're going to go do the other thing you do as the business owner. You're going to be the owner again instead of the technician and you're going to go out and you're going to make sales. You're going to do client development. You're going to do business development. So not only have you cut your time dramatically, even though you're still doing the design work, while your fulfillment partner and your contractor is going out and they're finishing the other piece of the work, you can go be working on client relationships and getting the next jobs into the pipeline. Okay. So that is one way to do this with, again, without hiring people, I mean, $3,400 for a, a website in California is great. Okay. Now, again, I didn't put anything that I said in the context of subscription web design, okay, which is ironic uh, because this is the subscription web design podcast. But again, you could just break those numbers down. You could do a setup fee. So watch this. You could do a setup fee for the $700 so that you have no out of pocket expenses. Okay. Physically out of pocket expenses. You could do a setup fee for that. And then for the remaining $2,400, you divide that over 18 months. That's $150 a month. Okay. So in that, Again, in this fictional scenario, you charge a $700 setup fee and then $150 a month. Now that, my friend, is affordable, okay? So that same thing, that even if you think a business owner might not be able to pay $3,400 for their website, you think they would be able to pay $700 down and $150 a month? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, my friend. So this is the beauty of subscription web design and strategically scaling your business in a way um, that is uh, sustainable, okay? Now, a couple other thoughts here, because I'm not really done yet, okay? This is just like uh, the main piece of how you could actually um, start getting some of this stuff uh, done. Now, uh, again, how, how would you do this if you were just doing the solopreneur thing, right? Like if you weren't relying on scaling a, a team at all. Well, again, I think subscription web design brings you um, a lot closer to this goal than anything else, okay? And you also, with price... You you have to you have to realize something. This is the big secret: is that you can charge whatever you want if you define a problem that is worth the money to solve. Okay, if you can solve the problem of my business needs more customers, you're worth money because that will make your customer more money. Okay, and so you don't have to feel bad about charging for that stuff. Um, Again, with pricing in general, think about everything that has to be done there. And even if you don't, so you can run through the same exercise, okay? So let's say you're going to help with the copywriting, you're going to do the initial design, and you're going to get that design translated onto a web page, okay? What would you have to pay somebody to do that? Do the research. Go out, do the research just like I said. You already know that it would cost $700 just to do that. And so we, we had that number already. So for those things... And then the designers and all that, it would cost $1,700. Now, if you're not going to be paying out any of that money and you're instead going to do it yourself, then you at least have a baseline. So at minimum, I would say you're going to charge $1,700. And then that $1,700, $1,700, if you're doing subscription web design, over 18 months is 94 a month. Now, here's the thing. 
Would I charge that low? Well, certainly not in California and certainly not today. However, have I charged that low before? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. I started out at $75 a month. So uh, I'm just trying to help you see that there are options here. And when you do subscription web design, the price issue becomes a lot more approachable. But please don't lose sight of two things. Number one, if you've got a problem that that uh, you can solve for clients, it's worth money to solve the problem, they'll pay for it. Okay, that's number one. And then um, number two is the, is the idea that really in your business, even if you're a solopreneur, there's three of you, okay? At the very least, there's three of you. There's an entrepreneur, there's a manager, and then there is a technician, okay? And those people, the jobs those people do have to be accounted for when you're pricing, okay? Because it takes time to do each of those people's jobs, <laughs> all right? So if you're pricing everything and you're looking at it just as one thing, oh, basically this person is buying me. They're not. They're not. They're buying your business. And your business, even if it's made up of you, is actually made up of three, okay? In any business, you need an entrepreneur, somebody who's creatively thinking about how to solve problems for clients. You need a manager, somebody who can actually manage roles, establish systems and processes and think that way, make sure that projects are delivered timely, this, that, and the other. And then you need a technician, a technician who actually sits down and turns the buttons. And if you're all three of those, fine, but charge as if you're paying for all three of those, okay? And then you can figure out the pricing from there. Um, and usually by figuring out what your cost would be to pay for all of those things to get done if you weren't the physical person doing all of that work, okay? And then doubling that. And that's a really, really great model for pricing your business. A couple other additional rules that I want to give you real quick before we cut off here. Um, the price has to make sense, okay? It has to make sense for where you live in the world. It has to make sense for your niche. Um, you know, I, I mean, you're not you're just not going to be able to charge somebody who started an online course business last week $5,000 a month for their stuff. That's just, in other words, that, that's incongruent. It just doesn't make sense, right? And so you have to decide whether you're willing to work with somebody like that or not. And that's a decision you have to make and you have to price accordingly. So whatever price you land on, check that against you know, the, the niche that you're in, the, you know, the geographical area that you're in, all of those different common sense factors that you need to, to see to make sure it all works, okay? Um, another rule is that your business must make a profit, okay? If your business isn't making a profit, you're a charity, not a business. And then only charge what you feel that you can multiply the value of, okay? Um, if, if you, this is a, a, a tough one and it requires a little bit of a mindset shift, but um, I love the idea that you shouldn't sell a product for a price that you don't think that you can actually 10x the value of that. So if you go charge $1,000 for a website, you should feel as though that website is good enough and does a good enough job for your client to get them a $10,000 result, okay? If you're going to charge $3,000 for a website, you should feel like that that website can get a um, $30,000 result. You want to think 10x and at least get as close to there as possible. And learning about business can help you here. Okay, learning about numbers and how much you know the lifetime value of their customer is, or how much their average purchase cost is, and if your website or your services were able to increase the number of customers they got per month, how what financial dollars that would translate to, and that's how you do value based pricing. And you think about the business um, and, and what they're doing and, and how you can make them successful. Um, and as I said, I'm going to close out with this thought is that honestly subscription web design solves a lot of these problems like we just said okay $3,400 when I first started out there's no way I would have felt okay charging somebody $3,400 it just wouldn't have happened okay but would I have felt okay with a $700 down payment and then $150 a month absolutely and guess what it translates to the same amount of money and you know for that 18 month period of time you have at least, and probably longer than that, you have stable recurring income coming from this client every single month. It's a huge, huge mindset shift. And I welcome you into this world because I think it makes a lot of sense. So I encourage you all to join me, subscriptionwebdesign.com in our group coaching program. Get the course, the mentorship, Friday fireside chats, the group and all that. It's, it's all included together. So I would love for you to come join us and um, yeah, subscriptionwebdesign.com. Come check it out. Come get on board. We're doing great things and I'm excited for every one of you in this community, and I hope you got a ton of value from listening to this episode. God bless. You guys take care, and we'll catch you in the next one.